ان الحمد لله نحمده واستعينه واستغفره واستهديه واعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد uh, Welcome to this uh, talk and tonight is going to be a talk it's really not a discussion type uh, due to the nature of the topic itself but let me just make it make it clear why uh, I chose to um, let me just give you a couple of reasons for choosing this this topic one uh, I'm responding to a demand to to repeat it um, I have given this before and, and it was actually um, um, I think it was available online. We had a, an online. Uh, we we had actually a, a, an audience of about 300 people uh, at that event. But also, it was it was being broad. Um, they, they were broadcasting it on uh, online a few weeks ago, um, and it was part of a series that talked about journey to the hereafter. So it starts from from before this, and then it talks about the process of death, and then the hereafter, and then. You know, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and my segment was about the process of death. Now, the other reason I'm doing this is not to scare us, but rather to help us to prepare us. So, not to scare, but rather to prepare. Because, uh, and recently there was a wave of, uh, you know, people that we know, or people that, we, you know, that were dying, and people were wondering as to what it is that people go through. Um, in the old days when people were very close, they would, they would witness someone going through that process. So it's, it's, it's a powerful reminder. Nowadays, of course, we usually go and attend a janazah after the body is, is taken care of and prepared. and We just you know, attend the burial. So no wonder that it doesn't affect us as much. Because we go and we witness someone being buried, someone that we knew, someone that was Every weekend I go, I travel somewhere, I come back, or while I'm traveling, I get a text message or something like that, or asking, um, you know, reminding me to, to come uh, attend the janazah or make dua for the person. And the Prophet ﷺ encourages us to actually remember this, because as they say, when you have the end in mind, right, the way you go about your life, would be totally different and this reality of death which is uncontested almost agreed upon by all kinds of people regardless of their faith or their belief or their uh, orientation everybody knows that that they're gonna have a day where everything you know their life is gonna come to an end and there will be a transition to another life so that's why I call it a journey because it's not an end because it's an end of something but it's a beginning of something else so it's a journey it's a transition it's like a connection that someone takes so what happens what do we find in the Islamic tradition or in the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu of course the Quran talks about the process of death and what how a person dies and how the angels come but there is there is a narration uh, there is a hadith by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he gives detail and graphic description as to what happens uh, when a person dies but before I get there I just want to say that very often people are concerned with with the last action or the last thing that they would be doing like nobody wants to to die and this is the idea or this is this is one of this is one of those take home lessons that we should get from this is that okay since it's a reality since it's something that would happen and ho nobody knows when right nobody knows when I mean there's no appointment there's no reservation there's no confirmation there's no uh, you know calls wake up call I mean a person may get wake up calls we get all kinds of wake up calls um, events that happen in our lives you know uh, some scholars consider gray hair a wake up call as well when, whenever you, you notice that first gray hair you're like that's a wake up call you know uh,
But there isn't really a, a call that you get saying that, oh by the way, your journey is about to end or is about to begin in, in a set amount of, of days or, or, or hours. Or, you know. And that's why the Prophet says, you know, remember it as often as possible. Right? For it is those who remember it, right? remember it because those who remember it are better prepared. And in a hadith, it's also said that an intelligent person, or a smart or a wise person, is a person who al kaisu mandan al It's a person who controls, who controls himself, conquers his soul, controls himself and his desires. وَعَمِلَ لِمَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ And works for that which is after death. So there is something that comes after death. But today we want to talk about the, this process. Uh, so a person who is, who is thinking or who's, who, uh, and, and always remembers this, this fact and this, this fate that is awaiting all of us, right, will be better prepared to face it. Number two, uh, the Prophet tells us that Whosoever, whoever dies doing something, that, that pretty much is, signifies or sh whatever they're doing shows that kind of you know, indicates as to what their fate is. So someone who dies doing something good, then, then chances are that, that this, is, this is a good sign. Right? Uh, the third point is that people usually, at the, you know, at the time of death, either remember, mention, utter, talk about, or do whatever they were passionate about the most in life. Whatever preoccupied their mind, their minds, and whatever they were, they were, they were involved in doing. So whatever they were passionate about, and there are numerous stories, uh, you know, that that are mentioned. And I do want to say something about that. In, 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 in a minute, inshallah ta'ala. So let's talk about, for instance, uh, what one of those things that people would want, uh, would want to be able to do or say is what? La ilaha illallah. Because the Prophet said, Man kana akhiru kalamihi min dunya la ilaha illallah dakhal al-jannah. Whosoever's last statement in this life is la ilaha illallah will enter jannah. So someone might say, oh, that's easy. I, I, I'll keep that in mind. I'll make sure that, that I tell everyone that you know, maybe around me. But how easy is it really to do that? Uh, someone once pointed out to me, a scholar pointed out, he said, he said, whatever the person's culture is in this life, during, that is what, what will come to either um, cheer them up or haunt them at the time of death. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, what was the Prophet the most passionate about? What was his great, greatest passion? The Prophet was asked, huh? Yeah, he was asked. He was asked. He said he mentioned three things that he that that he that he loves or that he enjoys, right? But he says, "Wajuilat urra tuaini fi salah." That that the most soothing, the most pleasant, the most pleasant practice or activity. You know, the, the, the one thing that gave him the greatest joy, amount of joy in this life, was Salah, praying. And we know that the, the, the Prophet whenever something happens of great significance, what, what would he do? Pray. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ shay. If something happens, if something overwhelms him, right, he would, he would pray. Right? And he used to say to Bilal, Bilal, call the iqam, arihna biha. Brings us, you know, you know, give us, comfort us with it, Bilal, comfort us with it. With, with salah, as opposed to let's get it out of the way, let's get it like as a, it wasn't a burden, it was more of a, of something that he was very passionate about. So when Aisha was asked who was present at the time of the death of the Prophet, and he had his head on her chest as he was going into coma and coming back, alayhi salatu salam, when she was asked as to what it was, what were what were his what was his last advice? What, what did he talk about? What was he concerned with? We remember that the Prophet وسلم, part of what he said was as salat as salah. Salah, salah. That was on his mind. You know. So the person's culture, that, that's what they do. And that's why no wonder, you know, and, and I heard this from numerous people, that a person, you know, 
Uh, some people would get in a car accident or they may be dying and when someone tells them to, to say La ilaha illallah instead of saying La ilaha illallah they would be singing their favorite song whatever that is your culture is a hip hop culture then that's what, what you know. they were singing their favorite song because that's what they were repeating that was their dhikr all the time the, their tongue was not used to, to so it, it wasn't easy uh, someone that I know Personally, Sheikh Abdul Bari, Hafizullah, uh, told me about, about a young man from, the, from his community that was dying, and his mom said to the Sheikh, please, you know, every time we tell him La ilaha illallah or say La ilaha illallah, he wouldn't say it. So help us up here. So the Sheikh came and he spoke to me, he wouldn't, he wouldn't say it. He said it was like every time we tell him to say La ilaha illallah, it was like we were speaking to him a language that he doesn't understand, like some kind of gibberish. He's like, what are you telling me? What are you saying? So I said, maybe Sheikh, he didn't understand it. Maybe it's like Arabic. He said, no, 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 no. This, this, he used to attend Sunday school. No, it, he was part of the weekend school. He was, he was a regular person. So, so he knew it. So I said, what was his story? He said, it's someone that basically deviated from, from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and did all kinds of things. So say la ilaha illallah, he wouldn't say it. Anything else, he will, he will, he will engage in a, you know, the person in a, in a discussion. But la ilaha illallah. And many people end up dying without saying it. On the other hand, I personally watched a, b a body of a person who was going home, a, br a brother who prayed Fajr, subhanAllah, that day Fajr, shook hands with him, looked at him, we made eye contact, you know, and it was like, it was one of these looks, because when I heard that someone got in a car accident, I knew that it was him. I had a feeling that it was him. So, so I shook hands with him and, and his, the way he looked at me was like a goodbye or something. He prayed Jum'ah in the Masjid again. Fajr in the Masjid. Jum'ah in the Masjid. Right? Asr in the Masjid. Maghrib in the Masjid. And there was, there was a fundraising that night for, for the Bosnian um, refugees. So, so he comes home and then he realizes that he didn't bring his checkbook. So he goes to, to, get, to get his checkbook. He comes back and there was no space in the parking lot of the Masjid. So he, he goes drives across the street. There was a church across the street to park in the parking lot of the church. The church had an agreement with the masjid that we, can, we could use their parking lot. So he parks at the church and he comes back crossing the street and it was a rainy day like, you know, and he gets hit and he dies. So what, 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 what an ending. So, so I remember watching his body and, and right before they uncovered the, the face, I had a feeling that it was, it was him. So when they uncovered him, I said, SubhanAllah, I had a feeling. It's just his face, you know, was... Then, then we're, we're, we're about to wash him and then his hand was like that. Yeah. Right? So obviously, you know, his hand was like that. And, and I straightened his, his fingers and it went back like this. That's, you know. So we're hoping that, <clears throat> that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, gave him that opportunity to say that. The shahada. So everybody w would want to, to, to say the shahada. But only those who, and then of course there's that story that I told you the other day, the Fajr crowd, you know, I always tell this story. You know, I still remember as a young man when, when I was told about a, a brother who was into da'wah, you know, going around preaching, you know, telling people about La ilaha illallah. That was his passion. Telling people about La ilaha illallah. Getting as many people as possible to say or to remember La ilaha illallah. His name was Ma'tuq, Ma'tuq Sheikh from Medina. So, he goes around, and that's what he did. And then one day he was lecturing, or he wanted to just give a bayan of it in the masjid, of, uh, in a small masjid in Medina. So after Maghrib, and when all of a sudden he, he gets like, he collapses. So people, of course, you can imagine there's commotion, there's people are panicking, everybody, let's call the ambulance, get a doctor, and then anyways, he comes back. And he's trying to calm everybody down. They're like, you know, it's okay, it's okay, you don't have to speak. Let's, let's go get you to the hospital. And he's like, people, calm down, calm down. And they're like, okay. So, and then it, it was his way to, to, if he wanted to calm someone down, he will say, say la ilaha illallah. So people will say la ilaha illallah. <laughs> right? So he, he started telling the crowd in the masjid, say la ilaha illallah, just to calm them down. And they're like, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, let's get you to the hospital. He's like, no, 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 people, not like that. It doesn't count, you know, like this. I want you to say with me, La ilaha illallah. And the entire message says, La ilaha illallah. Right? He tells them to take, take, take deep breath and say, La ilaha illallah. So in the entire message is saying, La ilaha illallah with him, when he gets a second, he, he gets a, a second massive heart attack and he falls dead.
So subhanAllah, someone said, yani, look, look at this person, not only did he manage, usually if a person is dying, they need someone to remind them to say, La ilaha illallah. This person's passion, mission in life, was to call people to La ilaha illallah. So he got to not only say it himself, but also remind people. Because this was his passion. Shaykh Walid Basyuni told me about the Mu'adhin, the person that used to call the Adhan in Haram. Right? Uh, when he died, Rahimahullah, one of, one of, one of the people that call, give the Adhan in Haram. He, he's very passionate. These people are very passionate about, about, about this activity. He said that, that, that he, was, he was hospitalized somewhere, either here in America or, or in, in Europe. So, so, and he started getting better. He got better and then they thought, خلاص, he was, you know. So when he, when he felt better, he told his kids, he said, uh, he said, I, I want to call the, I want to, I, I miss, I miss calling the other. So he asked, you know, that they help him. He made wudu and everything. And then he called the other out loud in the hospital. People who have never heard the adhan, they started coming and saying, oh, what's wrong, what's wrong? They're like, okay, leave him alone. This is, this is what he wants to do, let him do that. So he calls the adhan just like he would call it in the haram. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. You know that famous adhan, right? He's done, he calls the iqamah, he prays two rak'ah. And then he looks at his kids and his wife and everybody. He says, you know, be patient, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, have an upright life, hold on to your faith gives him final words and then says the shahada and dies. Right. So what is it you know, that, 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 that happens? The Prophet ﷺ was reported to have <coughs> Al-Bara ibn Azib, one of the young companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in a hadith uh, which, is, which was authenticated or which was verified to be, to be um, sound. Al-Bara ibn Azib said that one day we, <coughs> we left we went out with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam attending a funeral procession of one of the Ansar, one of the Ansar. The Ansar are the indigenous, um, the indigenous Muslims of Medina, the, 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 the indigenous um, Muslims of Medina, those who basically, um, <coughs> the natives of Medina. So one of, one of them passed away, so the Prophet ﷺ and his companions went out in his janazah. So he says, فَلَمَّا انْتَهَيْنَا إِلَى الْقَبْرِ جَلَسَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم على شفير القبر. So what happened is when they got to the grave, the grave was not ready, like fully ready. It, it needed to be maybe expanded or it needed to be, you know, somehow you know, prepared. So it was, not, it was not ready. So they put the janazah next to the grave and they sit around it. And then they sat around the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Prophet was sitting right at the, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> he was sitting at the edge uh, of the grave, alayhi salatu salam, looking at the grave. And he had in his hand, a, he said, وَفِي يَدِهِ وَفِي يَدِ النَّبِيُّ عُودٌ يَنْكُتُ بِهِ الْأَرْضِ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had with him a stick, a branch of a tree, with which he was basically scratching the ground. And he said, so we sat around the Prophet وَجَلَسْنَا حَوْلَهُ وَكَأَنَّ عَلَىٰ رُؤُوسِنَا الطَّيْرِ Meaning, they, they wouldn't talk. He said, we were sitting around him, completely silent and still, like we have birds sitting on our heads. This was an expression by the Arabs, when they say, كَأَنَّ عَلَىٰ رَأْسِهِ الطَّيْرِ He is so still and he's so quiet, motionless, right? That the birds will, as if there is a bird that he's afraid that he, you know. So that's, that was a common expression that the Arabs used. So the Prophet then, after, you know, after a while of scratching the ground, he, lift, he lifts his head, alayhi salatu salam, looks at, it, at his companions, and he says, استعيذوا بالله من عذاب القبر. استعيذوا بالله من عذاب القبر. استعيذوا بالله من عذاب القبر. He repeats it, he says, uh, twice or three times. So, basically, he said, seek refuge in Allah, seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the punishment of the grave. And he was getting their attention. Then he turned to them and he said, In al Abd al Mu'mina Ida Kana fi Kita min al Dunya wa Iqbali min al Akhira, Nazala ilayhi min al Sama imala ikatum bidu wujuh, Kaana wujuha hum shams. He said that when, when a person, when a, when a believer is uh, basically transitioning from, from this life to the hereafter, when a believer is transitioning from this life to the hereafter, uh, there will descend upon him, there will come to him angels 
with bright faces. Their faces are so bright like the sun, right? So it would be so bright that the person, for when the angels arrive, will know. Um, carrying with them, as the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ma'ahum kafanu min akfan al-jannah wa hanutum min hanuti al-jannah." They will come carrying with them shrouds from the shrouds of Jannah and uh, hanut. What do they call it? Um, the, the material that they use to embalm the, bo the body basically prepare the body and, and, and wash it and you know all kind of scented scented uh, uh, products musk. what? no it's not only musk but there's like a, col a collection there's a set of of, of, uh, of products that they use to, to embalm the body and prepare it so that you know to, to give the body you know so the body will resist decaying and the smelling that, so it's it, it it includes you know scented oils, but it's a whole set of products basically, right? So they will have they will have that set with them, but from Jannah this time, right? And then they sit as the Prophet sallallahu said, فَجِلِسُونَ مِنْهُ مُدَّ الْبَصَرِ So they will sit a distance from him as far as his eyes can see. So if it's a room, then they will sit at the end of the room. And I don't know if you if you ever at attended or witnessed someone you know dying. Sometimes, all of a sudden, they instead of like focusing on the people around them, they will be looking away. Right? I don't know how many people witnessed that. They will be looking away like they're seeing like, you know. And it happened with people that I know. For for instance, my grandmother, you know, all of a sudden, you know, and and Subhanallah, so. So she was looking away, so they will, they will look away. Uh, and from, of course, their demeanor and from their looks, the person will know whether these are the angels of mercy or the angels of, of, of punishment. So, so the angels of mercy will come in this form, of course, very bright faces, um, you know, with white clothes. Uh, and then they will sit. Then when, it's, when the moment comes, when, when the moment comes, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when that moment is, and all, even the angel of death will not know until the moment comes actually, then comes the angel of death, the very angel of death, that Allah talks about in the Quran, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ These are just his aids, these are just the carriers of the soul, but the angel of death will come, and when the angel of death comes, he comes and sits by the head of the of the of the person who is dying and then says ya ayyatuha an-nafs al-mutma'inna wa ya ayyatuha an-nafs al-tayyiba ukhruji ila maghfiratin min Allah wa ridwan so he will say o oh, o oh you pure and righteous soul exit to forgiveness come out to the forgiveness of your lord and his pleasure the prophet said fa takhruju fa tasilu kama tasilu al-qatratu min fi al-siqa fa ya'khudhuha it will emerge it will come out right uh, flowing like a drop of water flows out of the mouth of a, 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 a jug or a, a bottle just easily it will just come out you know flowing easily so he, he takes it and then when he takes it they will not leave it in his hand these angels will come rushing carrying the soul and they, they basically wrap that soul in that shroud that they have from Jannah and then they carry it to heaven Actually, when they shrouded, when they when they shrouded the Prophet so said, there will come out of it the most pleasant smell. Right and now, all of this happens in a realm that that is beyond. Uh, you know, s some people, you know, sometimes say that they captured that. They they would capture like the smell. You know. Uh, you know, I remember praying janazah so many times in Masjid al Nabawi. But there was that one particular time where there was about six or seven janazahs. And when they opened the gates, Wallahi, I have never smelled anything like that. So I said, okay, maybe they use something fancy, someone, someone. But I could tell that there was someone special amongst these people. Which one was it? I don't know. But when we followed the janazah, before, and this is after Fajr, and it was dark. And before the sunrise, what sunrise? I mean, within half an hour, all the bodies were buried. Done. It was so fast, subhanAllah, and they were buried in the Baqiyah. 
And many people, I mean, I, I, I ran into a person who's in charge in Mecca, who is the, who is the, he was in charge of the set of the, of one of the two largest uh, services that wash bodies and prepare them in Mecca. You see all these bodies that are brought to Mecca? There, 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 there are only two places where, where that is taken care of. He's, this guy is in charge of one of them. And it's actually, according to him, it's the largest. Right? And he told me, I said, okay, what is the most you know, amazing thing? I mean, you just sit with these people, you hear all kinds of stories. All kinds of stories. So the Prophet said that they will come out of it a smell that is uh, a pleasant uh, smell, uh, which is more pleasant than, than any type of musk that you would find on this, on this earth. So the Prophet says, And by the way, in another hadith, the Prophet talks about when the soul is, is, is coming out, that's when the person basically, when the angel of death comes, that is a moment, that's, the, that's a final test. That's even, that is a testing period, by the way. A person is tested. It was said that one of the greatest scholars of Qurtuba, Cordoba in, 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 in Andalus, right? one time was surrounded by some of his colleagues and some of his students as he was dying. And they said to him, قُلْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ سَيْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ سَيْ لَا إِلَهِ اللَّهِ That's a testing uh, you know, uh, period. And he kept saying, no, no, no. I will not, I will not. And then he came back. Right, so they said, what happened? We kept telling you. He said, no, no. He said, did you guys hear me? Did I say something? They said, yes, we asked you to say la ilaha illallah. And you kept saying, no, I will not. He said, by Allah, I was not talking to you. Because he was turning his head left and right. And it, he said, by Allah, I was not talking to you. But I rather saw a, a, a shaytan, a devil, basically, that came to, to, my, to my right and kept telling me to denounce Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to reject Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to, to turn away from my faith at that moment. And that, you know, he will save him or whatever, you know, he was being tested. So I said, no, I shall not say that. And I turned the other way, he said, and, and another one came. And so that's what I, who I was speaking to. Huh? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of course, will make those who, who, who are true believers firm at that point. So when the angels take the soul and they, they ascend, the Prophet said they will then ascend with it. And they would not pass by any group of angels, any patch of angels, except that they will ask that this group of angels that they would pass, they will say, oh, whose soul is that? Who's that pleasant soul? Where did this pleasant smell or soul come from? So the angels will identify that person. They will say, this is so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, or so-and-so, the daughter of so-and-so. Calling that person with his or <coughs> her most pleasant name. You know, so they will identify that person. And these angels will greet that, that individual or that, that soul. Until they reach the seven, until they uh, reach the until, until they reach the, the lower heaven, and they will ask for permission for the gates of the lower heaven to be opened, and it will be opened. And the Prophet says that that soul will be followed, each layer, each heaven, the elites. And the, high, the, the, the highest ranked angel of each layer will follow that soul in a procession, just, you know, like it's, a, like it's, a, it's a wedding day or something like that. They will follow that, 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 that soul to the next layer. Until they reach the seventh heaven, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, اُكْتُبُوا كِتَابَ عَبْدِي فِي عِلِّيِّينَ وَأَعِيدُ عَبْدِي إِلَى الْأَرْضِ فَإِنِّي مِنْهَا خَلَقْتُهُمْ وَفِيهَا أُعِيدُهُمْ وَمِنْهَا أُخْرِجُهُمْ تَارَةً أُخْرَى Then Allah the Almighty, when, they reach the, 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 when the soul reaches the seventh heaven with the angels that are carrying it, Allah will say, write, write the record of my slave, my abd, in Illiyin. Illiyin is where the record of the pious people will be, will be kept. In al abrara Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about 
So that is a book of record where the names of... So the person is finally now registered where they belong. Right. Right. Now the person is, 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 is basically written there. Then Allah will say, return the soul of my servant. Return it, return it to, to down to earth, to the body. Right? For I have created them from it. And to it, I will return them. And from it, I will resurrect them another time. So the Prophet ﷺ said, so the soul is returned back into the body. Now someone might say, okay, what happens to bodies that... Decompose? No, bodies that evaporate or like, you know, like are lost or like, right? Again, this, this, this is, we're talking about a period. The barzakh is a period, a stage. And everybody's going to go through that period regardless whether there is an actual body that you can identify or not. Right? But <clears throat> under normal circumstances there will be a body and it will be in a grave. Right? So that's, that's where, where the soul is, is going to go back. Now is the person going to come back to life? No. Obviously. Not physically. But there will be some kind of, of union between the body and the soul. And this is of course a dimension and it's, it's part of the ilm al-ghayb that we don't know. We don't know what it is like. Actually by the time we know what it is like, it's going to be too late. And those who know exactly what it is like, cannot talk to us to tell us what it is like. So the Prophet says, then will come to him two angels. Then, and they will sit him, ask him to sit up. And then they will say to the person, مَن رَبُّكْ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي Allah." Who's your Lord? And he will say, My Lord is Allah. Then they will say, وَمَا دِينُكُ What is your deen? What is your way of life? فَيَقُولْ دِينِيَ الْإِسْلَامِ Then he will say, My religion is Islam. Then they will say, مَا هَذَا الرَّجُلُ الَّذِي بُعِثَ فِيكُمْ فَيَقُولُ هُوَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And they will say to him, What would you say or what do you say about this person who was sent to you, this man who was sent to you? Then he will say, He's the Messenger of Allah. And if it's of course from previous generations, then they will identify their messenger, whoever that messenger is. Then they will say to him, وَمَا عِلْمُكَ What is your knowledge? What, what is the basis of the, all of this? Then the person will say, قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ فَآمَنْتُ بِهِ وَصَدَّقْتُ uh, He will say, I read the book of Allah, uh, you know, and I believed in it. And I testify to its truthfulness. فَيُنَادِي مُنَادِي مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَنْ صَدَقَ عَبْدِي فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَافْتَحُوا لَهُ بَابًا إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ Then a caller will come, a voice will come from heaven, from the heavens, saying, my slave has spoken the truth. Can you imagine being confirmed by this voice? So confirmation will come. My, my slave has spoken the truth. So furnish him or furnish for him from a Jannah. And clothe him from a Jannah. And open for him a doorway to Jannah. The Prophet says, So he will receive from the breeze and from the scent of Jannah. And his grave will be expanded as far as his eyes can see. And then, and this is the most exciting part. If you think that, well, this is one of the most exciting parts. That is exciting that the person. But here's an exciting part. After all of this happens, we know that the Prophet ﷺ told us that when people leave the person in his or her grave, they will hear the footsteps of the people departing and leaving them. And we will be left alone. There will be no spouse, no wife, no children, no... No brother, no, no neighbor, no friend, nothing. The person will be left alone. Will the person be alone in his grave? <coughs> Most likely not. What do you think? He won't, I think. No. He won't. No. By Allah, the person will not be alone in his or her grave. They will have a companion. The Prophet says, وَيَأْتِيهِ رَجُلٌ حَسَنُ الْوَجْهِ حَسَنُ الثِّيَابِ طَيِّبُ الْرِيحِ as for the believer, when the believer is buried, in that, in that period, the Prophet said, a man will come, or a person, right, will come. A person who has a beautiful face, and beautiful clothes, right, and beautiful scent, will come. 
And that person will say, أَبْشِرْ بِالَّذِي يَسُرُّكْ هَذَا يَوْمُكَ الَّذِي كُنْتَ تُوْعَدْ فَيَقُولُ مَنْ أَنْتْ فَوَجْهُكَ الْوَجْهُ الَّذِي يَجِئُ بِالْخَيْرِ The person will say to him, Rejoice in what will please you, for this is the day you were promised. Remember how Allah says, هَذَا يَوْمُكُمُ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُوْعَدُونَ The Quran says that. This is your day. This is the day that you've been talking about. This is the day that you discussed in these kind of gatherings. This is the day that you were, you were preparing for. This is the day that was on your mind throughout your life. This is the day. This is the end that you were, you were promised. And then the believer will not, you know, cannot afford but to ask, Who are you? Who are you? For your face is a face that brings good news. Who are you? This is your very pleasant looking, pleasant smelling, you know, per person. I wonder who you are. Can you guess who it is? No. The deeds. So the Prophet said that the man will say, Ana amaluka salih. I am indeed your righteous deeds. So the Prophet said, basically is telling us that the deeds will come in, a, in some, some form of a companion that will accompany us, meaning the person will, will be, uh, you know, the person will be with this person who looks beautiful, you know, who will keep them company with all the beautiful memories of the good deeds that they did in this life. Until the day of, Until the day of resurrection. Until the day of resurrection, the Prophet said that the person then will say, Rabbi aqim is sa'a, Rabbi aqim is sa'a, hatta arja'a ila ahli wa mali. The person, upon seeing all of this, will say, O oh Allah, O oh Lord, establish the hour, meaning the day of judgment, establish the hour, so I may return, I may be reunited with my family and with my wealth. The person will, will want to go back. That's it. L of course they can't go back because they know the only way that they can go back to what they have left behind, right, is if the day of judgment is started. So they will ask Allah and they will say, Oh Allah, make the day, the day of judgment. I'm ready. Let's, let's begin the day of judgment now. So he can see his family. So he can see his family. He can be reunited. So his family would catch up with him. Right. So, and then imagine uh, someone being in that state, right. And of course the day of judgment will not be established right away, right. But guess what? It would be so pleasant that the per that that it will be like a sweet dream, like a like a one like a good night's sleep. That's it. It's just like when you have a, a pleasant dream. How uh, you know, no matter how long it is, right? It feels it goes real quick. But a nightmare, no matter how short it is, it feels like forever, right? If you know what I mean. Right? So, so this is the story of 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 a, of a believing soul, as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Then the Prophet turned to the companions and he told them what will happen to a soul that rebelled against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turned away and almost the opposite of everything that I mentioned would happen. The Prophet talks about how the angels will come for, you know, with frowning, like very scary faces. They will have uh, garments from hellfire. Uh, they will have dark, dark you know, fe you know, features. They will sit where he can see them. And the person will be basically terrified. Then will come the angel of death, and the angel of death will shout and say, "Ayyatuha nafsul khabitha, ukhruji ila sakhatin min Allahi wa ghadab." So the, 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 may Allah subhanahu wa taala pr preserve us, O wretched soul, O you wicked soul, come out to the wrath and the anger of your Lord. So the Prophet said that the, 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 that the soul will panic and will disperse throughout the body that the angel of death have to basically pull it and snatch it. And the Prophet says that every single nerve, cell, every fiber of that person's being will feel the pain of the soul being extracted out of the body. And by the way, the separation between the soul and the, the body is very painful. Now we don't know. I mean, we know we're living. We know that we, we, carry, we have ruh, but where is it? What does it look like? Where is it located? Which part? What does it look like? What, what, what is it going to feel like when the, when the separation takes place? We don't know. By the time the person knows, then it's what? It's over. Right? The person will be able, Allah says in the Quran, the person will be able to see things and see dimensions at that moment and from that moment and on that they cannot see, that they could not see before that. 
So from that moment, it's going to be just a different experience, a different role, a different, you know, except that the person will not be able to convey the message. Right. So, so the Prophet ﷺ talks about how, how when the angel of death pulls it, the, 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 the aides, the other angels, do not leave it in his hand. They rush to it, they take it, shroud it in these shrouds from, 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 from hell. And, and it will be, uh, they will ascend, and then when they ascend, the, the soul, that soul will be blocked, the gates of heaven will not be opened. And the Prophet basically quoted a verse from the Quran where Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَذَبُوا بَآيَاتِنَا لَا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا, يدخ... لا تُفَتَّحُ لَهُمْ أَبْوَابُ السَّمَاءِ وَلَا يَدْخُلُونَ الْجَنَّةِ From Surah Al-A'raf That the gates of heaven will not be opened for them, nor shall they enter paradise. And the soul will be basically dropped back. And the angels of the angels will come to the person and ask them the same sets, set of questions. And the person will be called and basically, even if the person knew the answers, theoretically the answers, but they did not believe in the answers, they will be so terrified, so overwhelmed that they will not be able to answer. And when the angels ask, مَنْ رَبُّكْ Who's your Lord? Who doesn't know who their Lord is? Tell me. Even atheists know that, who, who their Lord is. But the person will be so terrified, so overwhelmed that the person will say, ah, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's like, it's, I don't know if you watch, if you watch cop, what is it called, cops? Cop? Like the show? When they catch a criminal and then they basically face that criminal, so what, what are you doing, what are you, right? A person who is guilty will, will, will panic. And we'll start saying, you know, and they're like, uh, they're, they're, not, uh, they're, they're not coherent, you know. They will start saying things, they will start babbling, right? Because they're, they're guilty, they're like, they don't have time to think, you know, right? A person, unless of course they're like the worst of criminals, they're like always calm. And, but a person who didn't do anything, they'll be calm, saying, I didn't do anything, I was just passing by. I was just passing through this. So... So when the, when the angels ask this person, and, and imagine what they're, you know, they're going to be frowning. Angels have very, 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 um, uh, you know, we're talking about ferocious angels, very, very, you know, we're talking about scary faces. So the person will not be able to answer as the Prophet ﷺ said, okay, what is your deen? I, I don't know. Who is this man that was sent to you? The messenger, whoever you followed. He said, I don't know, I don't know. I, I heard people saying things and I just, whatever. The person will say that. I just heard, I followed people, I was a blind follower. I just did whatever everybody else did. Then, of course, the Prophet ﷺ said that a, a, a caller or a voice will come from heaven, you know, that will say, كَذَبَ عَبْدِي فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَافْتَحُوا لَهُ بَابًا إِنَ النَّارِ وَالْعَيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ اللَّهُ مَجَلَّ مِنَ النَّارِ Allahumma ajirna min al-nar My servant has spoke, has lied, spoken lie. So furnish him from hellfire, open a gate to him, uh, for him from hellfire. And the Prophet said, there, there will come from the heat of, of, of Jannah that which basically will ruin that person's you know, life in that, in that stage. And then his grave will constrict, basically crushing, crushing him. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, then it will come to him, and this is one of the worst parts of it, actually of it, because the story doesn't end here. The Prophet says, then will come to him a very ugly, bad smelling, bad looking person, and he will say to him, you know, here comes to you that which will basically uh, ruin your day. This is the day you were promised. This is the day you were warned of. So he says, who are you for your face is just a face that brings bad news. He says, Ana amaluka al-khabith, I am your evil deeds. And then the Prophet said, then the person will scream and say, Oh Lord, la tuqim as Oh Allah, do not establish the hour, don't start the day of judgment. Because nobody would want to face that. That's exactly maybe why it was reported that when Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an, according to Al-Hakim and Imam Ahmad, in a hadith, they said, كان عثمان إذا وقف على القبر بكى 
Uthman radiallahu anhu, whenever he stands by a grave, an open grave. Nowadays we go to the grave, we look at it, like, oh, okay, this is what it looks like. It doesn't affect us, subhanAllah. We're so detached from this. Right? Uthman used to look at the grave and, and cry. So they said, they said to him, Uthman, whenever Jannah, whenever paradise is mentioned, whenever hellfire is mentioned, you don't cry, but yet when you see an open grave, you cry. What is it about the grave that really moves you? He says, Uthman says, لَقَدْ سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ I, Indeed, I have heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say, القبر, The grave, أول منازل الآخرة It's the first stage to the hereafter. فَإِنْ نَجَى مِنْهُ صَاحِبُهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَيْسَرُ مِنْ He said, and if a person is safe, if the person makes it through this stage, then whatever comes after it is easier. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْجُوا مِنْهُ صَاحِبُهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ فَمَا بَعْدَهُ أَشَدُّ مِنْ And if the person is, is, is not safe from this, if the person doesn't make it through this stage, then whatever comes after it is even worse. So the Prophet here in the hadith basically, or Uthman in the hadith indicates that that's, there is something that happens in the grave. And the Prophet told us in the hadith, there is a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ passed by a grave of two individuals. Someone might say, okay, what constitutes then? Then what are the kinds of things that the person will have to basically deal with? I mean, when we say the person will, will, be, will be in the company of his bad deeds, in a form of a person, who, ugly looking person, awful smell, what kind of bad deeds are we talking about? Any deed that the person basically would not give up, any, any, any evil deed that the person does not repent from, right? And sometimes it may, not, it may not be something that people look at as a big deal, you know. It doesn't have to be murder or... You know, we're talking about, about any evil deed, that, especially the ones that involve abusing or hurting other people. That may come in, basically. So the Prophet, for instance, in one hadith, he talked about, he was passing by two graves, and he said, indeed, these two individuals are being punished, as we speak. And the Prophet said, and it wasn't a bit, you know, and, and they're being punished for something that people usually belittle, things that people look down upon. He said, as for one of them, one of them, كَانَ يَمْشِي بَيْنَ النَّاسِ بِالنَّمِيمَةِ One of them used to gossip, gossip, and spread rumors. As for the other one, فَكَانَ لَا يَسْتَتِرُوا مِنْ بَوْلِهِ The other one did not, was not careful with regards to his, you know, hygiene and and didn't care about, about you know, protecting himself from his urine. Meaning that person basically, you know, didn't have proper tahara, you know, and they didn't care, they took that lightly. And nowadays we see that people take these, these things lightly. These are, these, these are two of the most common diseases. Alright? And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to ask Allah subhanahu wa taala seek refuge uh, from the hell from from the hellfire, but he used to also seek refuge from the punishment of the grave. And this is recorded. The Prophet used to do that at the end of the salah before he goes to sleep. Uh, you know, almost on a daily basis, several times the Prophet will ask Allah to preserve him from the punishment of the grave as well as from the punishment of the hereafter and from the tests and trials of death and from the tests and trials of of life. So again, this was meant to again give just a the prophet the reason the prophet gave us this description and the Sahaba conveyed this message to us and the scholars basically preserved this and recorded it is for us to know before it's too late. So at least that we at least we are informed. And again, as I said in the beginning of the session, this is not meant to really scare us and make us you know lose sleep, but rather it's meant to prepare us. So we need to to you know, be steady in this life and, and we need to, to basically get, get ready. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's a reality. Whether it's, it's, you know, it doesn't matter how long, you know, eventually, you know, life will come to an end, right? And every day a person, every day the person is closer to that day than they were, you know, today we are closer than we have ever been, right? Every day, subhanAllah, if you think about it, you're closer than yesterday. So, in fact, if you want to look, if you want to think about life, life is not. You see, people say, "Oh, yeah, I've been living for six years." No, no, no. You, you know, or I gained a year, or, or I'm a year older. No, no. You're a year closer. <laughs> you know, you're not gaining anything, and that's why someone said, you know, it's one of the silliest things. Actually, by the way, I used to say this, and then I found out that that a Western philosopher 
Even a non-Muslim, I think he, he said one of the most foolish things is for people to celebrate their, their birthday. He said that for people to celebrate the loss of a year of their lives. It, it was just ironic how people, how, how it just, I was like, wow. You know. But he said people, people do that. It just shows how, how detached we are from the reality of life. You know. So, that, so he, he said, I mean, this is lifespan, right? And then this, the amount of this span is only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and it's a matter of you being, and if this is the beginning and this is the end, let's go from left to right, for, just for the sake of the audience, right? So if this is the end and this is the beginning, you don't know where you are. Are you here? Are you here? Are you, are you in the middle? You don't know. The reality is that we don't know. But of course, you know, for many people, you know, they, they, many people assume that whatever is left is less than what, what is gone. So again, what should we do? We should, we should, again as the hadith of the Prophet said, you know, be smart and work for that which is inevitable. It's inevitable. If someone was to say, okay, well maybe this is not the best example because we're in California. I was going to say, if there's an inevitable disaster, a natural disaster that, that is about to come and people say prepare, would you not prepare? But again, California is, we, we kind of, we, we get desensitized, right? Seriously, we get this sense time, like we're living here, we're like, okay, we know the earthquake, anytime. Yet many people are not really prepared. But if someone was to say there's, there's something inevitable, that's gonna, usually people, smart, wise people prepare, prepare themselves. So this is the idea, we need to prepare ourselves for this journey, and the fuel of, for, of this journey is none other than good deeds. Good deeds. Deeds that will, will, will help us advance, you know. Uh, charity, charity, even a smile is a charity, good word is a charity, forgiveness, pardoning one another, you know, how many people, Allah, I've heard it so many times, so many times, people saying, oh, I wish you would forgive me, after the person is gone, I wish, I wish, I wish, it's too late, so now is the time, so good deeds count so long we're here, and so long these other people are here. And brothers and sisters, I, you know, we seriously need to take the, you know, this into consideration and overcome you know, whatever it is that is getting between us and the right thing that we know is right. We need to get over it. If we cannot get over it, this is the test. And we're being tested every single day with this test. And until the person finally makes that, 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 that transition and is able to overcome whatever, Wallahi, no matter how, how significant it may be to anyone, when we, if we, if we look at it, if we measure it by the standards of the hereafter, it's trivial. So, so this is this is the whole the whole point from this that we go ahead and do whatever we have to do. The things that we we knew uh, that that we know now are right, and we do them before it's too late. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to help you and I overcome our weaknesses and our shortcomings and make us of those who listen and follow the best of what they listen to.